another example. One, 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 negative one, eight, four. And again, we're going to try and get this into rho echelon form. So I didn't begin with the equations, I began with the augmented matrix, but I think you understand how to get it into this form. So this would basically mean that we started with the equations x plus y equals 8 and x minus y equals 4. Would be the system that gets that. Okay, so now we already have the 1 in that corner, so we don't have to multiply by anything to get that. We want a 0 here, so we're going to take make a new row 2 by taking row 1 multiplying it by a negative and adding it to row 2. So 1 plus, or negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus negative 1 is a negative 2. And negative 1 times, ne times 8 is negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4. Top row stays exactly the same. Now we want to turn that into a 1, so we're going to multiply by a negative 1 half. So in other words, our row 2 is going to be negative 1 half times the old row 2. So our top row stays the same. Negative 1 half times 0 is 0. Negative 1 half times negative 2 is a positive 1. Negative 1 half times negative 4 is a positive 2. Now we want to get a 0 here, so to do that we're going to create a new row 1 by taking row 2, multiply by a negative, and adding it to row 1. Okay, so our row 2 is going to stay the same this time. So negative plus 1 is 1, negative plus 1 is 0, negative 2 plus 8 is 6, and we've now put it in row echelon form, so now we just figure out the solution from that, and it would be x equals 6 and y equals 2. That was another fairly easy example. I just wanted to show you one more thing that we didn't get to, and that is when a system is inconsistent, which means it has no solution, remember, you're working away at your row echelon form, and suddenly you get a whole row of zeros. Everything cancels out, but you don't have a zero over here. That's not possible to have 0x plus 0y plus 0z it just simply cannot equal 4. So that is a clue to having a no solution. Or the other possibility would be having a dependent situation where there's infinite solutions. And the way that will look is you're going along through the process and you end up with all zeros across the bottom. Basically that's saying that 0x plus 0y plus 0z actually does equal 0, which is always true. But it doesn't tell us what x, y, and z are because they could be anything. So that's when we get our infinitely many solutions. Then what you do is you take the next answer up and solve it for a variable and kind of plug it in to see. Basically you'll kind of say x can be anything and then based on what x is, y would be this, and you would give an equation with x in it, and then z would be this, which would have an equation with, with x in it as well, with y plugged in, so that it's just in terms of x. So you say x has any solution, any number you want for x, plug it in to get the y value, plug it into this to get the z value. Um, if you look at the answers in the back of the book, you'll kind of get the idea on how that works.